Was good, y'all. Around 15 minutes ago, three new heroes arrived on the test server, which is going to be Ingrid, Glacius, and Elisa. Elisa being an epic Pierce allowed, so I have high expectations. As usual, I haven't checked out any leaks, any kits before, so we'll be going in with the first look the same way you will. This is going to be the same way you are used to, so it's going to be a showcase where you see all abilities in action and obviously at um, max. Uh, Max level with all interest keys. So let's get straight into it. And what better way to start into this series than with a character intro trailer? So here we go. We're going to be enabling sound for this one. So let's have a look at what we're dealing with. Let's hope not any more tentacles. Okay. This, this kind of has something like Asgard, right? Like that move. rainbow and bridge so from like the Marvel Universe. <laughs> Step into the light of the new I don't know about you, but I thought she was older, right? Stars, we will More like non-sexualized. But what is... <laughs> what is that armor? That armor is wild. Step into the light of a new dawn. So basically she has armor that protects exactly one ass cheek. Great! <laughs> Alright, what a start. So how about we dive straight into her kit and see what she's all about. So. Alright. We start off with the talent. When deployed enters solar mode. Solar mode, the mode infused with the might of the sun, excelling in dealing with a large number of enemies. Okay, so AoE. Launching four basic attacks turns the next basic attack into solar flare. Solar flare deals 320% AoE damage to up to 15 enemies in a wide front area. Sure. <laughs> Stellar mode, the mode infused with the might um, of stars, excelling in dealing with a single powerful enemy. Launching four basic attack turns the next basic attack into star shower. 50% damage to one enemy in range 12 times, which means 600% damage every four basic attacks. Okay. Okay, magic attack. Solar mode. And also, would you look at this range? We have five tile range, so uh, yeah, Dahlia. <laughs> Dahlia, how does it feel, huh? To not be alone anymore. It is one tile less though. Dahlia has six and um, Ingrid only has five. So it's only uh, an enhanced um, enhanced Volcura range. Okay, so what do we what are we dealing with? Solar mode deals 120% damage uh, one time to up to eight enemies or deals 60% damage two times to one enemy. Okay. Empyrean Tempest! Ah, oh, why is it so long? <laughs> triggering Solar Flare grants one solar energy point and triggering Star Shower grants one stellar energy point. So every four basic attacks you get either a solar energy point or a stellar energy point and up to five of any of those can, can be accumulated. Each solar energy point or star a stellar energy point increases her damage by 5%, so up to 25%. And if you do reach 5 solar energy or stellar energy stacks, you will enter solar overload, reducing attack interval by 25%, so she attacks 25% faster, while uh, she cannot get that during her ultimate. Uh, basically, she can't use her ultimate during it, nor can't she get any more solar energy. Okay. And then we have Stellar Overload, increasing attack by threat 30%. And again, during that Stellar Overload, you can't use the ultimate. Okay. Casting Cosmic Shift will clear all solar energy points and stellar energy points. Cosmic Shift is most likely the ultimate. Celestial Wrath. Solar Flare deals an extra true damage one time equal to 150% of the hero's attack to enemies hit. Okay. And 
Each damage dealt by Star Shower has a 25% chance of inflicting burning and a 25% chance of inflicting raining erosion. So Solar Flare, which is the single, no, is the AoE one, just does extra true damage. And Star Shower has every time a 25% chance for either burning or radiant erosion. Sheesh. Then we have Arena Damage Increase. Increases damage in the arena by 15%. And finally, the ultimate, Cosmic Shift. Solar Mode switches to Stellar Mode, Stellar Mode switches to Solar Mode. Alright, so she's strictly a basic attack champion. Because the only thing her ultimate does is change her mode. So you can, with the ultimate, at 100 rage cost? What the fuck? <laughs> Okay, so whenever you desire, you can actually swap from Solar into Stellar or Stellar into Solar mode. Okay, and now lastly, the Lord bonus, Radiant Glory 3. Increases faction team members' basic attributes by 15%, while periodically increasing faction team members' damage and healing bonus by 50% for 20 seconds. The more faction allies there are on the team, the more frequently it takes effect. After the Lord deals direct damage to an enemy, faction team members deal 20% extra damage to that enemy within 3 seconds. So as long as she attacks a target, every one of her faction members deals 20% more damage to their target. As long as she hits every 3 seconds. That's nasty. Okay, what about the base stats? How, how bad can it be? So we have the 5 tile range, 6000 attack, which is really high, 2600 magic resistance, which is high but makes sense it's a mage, 3 second attack interval, which is decent for a mage but still rather high, and for a champion that mainly relies on her basic attacks, maybe a bit too high, we shall see. Okay, awake. Ah, uh, will cost. Cost. How much do you cost? 25! Hmm. Maybe, maybe that stops her from being a menace in arena. Alright, so. A1. In stellar mode, she deals 20% increased damage to targets inflicted with radiant erosion and also receives 20% less damage from targets inflicted with radiant erosion. You know what comes to mind there instantly? Gate boss 2. This is straight up her dealing more damage and receiving less damage in Gate Boss 2. Okay, 300 attack, 5%, uh, 5 attack percent from the Lord bonus. Doing the Solar Overload and Stellar Overload reduces the number of basic attacks required by the talent to trigger Solar Flare and Star Shower to 1. That is pretty broken. That is pretty broken. A4, 8% penetration. And A5, Solar Flare, ignores 25% magic resistance. Cause, why not? Bruh. <laughs> Jesus. What a kid. Honestly, what a kid. This basically does it all, no? Damn. Holy. Alright. Alright, yeah, so now that we all had a look at Ingrid, we're going to close off this showcase. And I honestly, I feel like she has a lot to prove. In my opinion, she has a lot to prove. And the reason for that is because even though her kit seems fancy and all, if we think about it strongly, all units that are good are good because of their ultimate. That is, that is just the base of this game. No unit is good because of their basic attacks in general, right? Like, even... Yeah, no, honestly, honestly, Arrogance is ultimate, Zillage is ultimate, Sila's ultimate, uh, Ivar's ultimate, uh, Artemis ultimate, Constance ultimate, Dolores ultimate, you name it, right? So she has something to prove. She has something to prove the fact that even though she doesn't use her ultimate, she's strong. So what you can expect is obviously going to be testing in every imaginable... Uh, dungeon where it, where it makes sense and something that instantly comes to mind interestingly enough is gate boss one because gate boss one obviously you need single target and also for those that have noticed we have this whole meta around using laura to rage regenerate to provide units with their ultimates how can an ingrid keep up like can she actually keep up 
For example, we swap her stance, right? And then she's here, right? There's no point in giving her ult gauge. So uh, running her at the top is the only position that makes sense because at that point she still gets uh, Dolores buff, right? How good can she be? Can she keep up with the big boys, with the Silas's, with the Hexes, with the Satchums, with all of those? Honestly, that is, that is the big question. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Also, how crucial will she be for uh, Gate Boss 2? That is all to be known, but honestly, she definitely has a unique kit and she has one ass cheek armor. Peace.